Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Law Firm Marketing. This is the show and tell. It's Thursday. It's five o'clock. It's also the 1st of April. So this it must be the <laughs> all, awful special. Uh, as you're noticing, Rich isn't with us at the moment. Uh, if you've joined just to see his face, he shall be joining later. Don't worry. In the meantime, uh, well, you have to put up with the rest of us. Uh, a quick introduction. We have our, our king jester, as usual, Simon up there in the corner we have the wonderful charlotte and we also have our special guest so i'm going to be very polite cat collier from <laughs> flair insight uh would you like to give yourselves a little bit of a, a wider introduction charlotte would you like to go first this time yeah let's do that um my name is charlotte Tuckett, and uh, i am the cmo of novum learning which is an online learning platform for professionals and uh, one of our main focuses um, within the platform is the legal sector so we bring together expert knowledge from all around the world um, to help legal professionals and anyone in the business of law um, run their um, practice more efficiently Thank you very much. And Simon, let's have a let's have a brief intro from yourself. Oh, the unicorn's back on the wall. Of course. <laughs> the unicorn is a good luck charm, as you know. Um, yeah, Simon Marshall from TBD Marketing. I founded this about three years ago. It is a marketing agency. It purely works for law firms and the legal sector. Um, I work mainly for smaller firms who want a virtual CMO. Um, and I love working for founders. So if you've started up a law firm, you want some help moving from three or four lawyers up to 10 or 20, then I'll help you. Uh, and then I also um, have a lot of fun working with firms on their digital marketing uh, kind of plans. And they uh, I report against what the top 200 firms do on that under the um, increasingly stupidly named <laughs> Digital 100. So, yeah. That sounds well organised. And <laughs> last but by no means least, a uh, very warm welcome to Kat Collier of Flair Insight. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me on. I uh, run Flair Insight. We're a marketing research agency, mainly working with law firms, but some accountancy firms as well. Uh, I set that up in 2017, but before that I used to work in-house at BLP. So I'm the owner of the Little Red Bus that I think you were talking about in Merch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, David, I think you valued that at a couple of grand. So I'm oh, at least, pleased. at least. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was working at BLP and that was a mixture of strategic insight and also people managing their web and CRM database function. Uh, before that, I worked at Pinson Masons, uh, Baker Tilly as it was then, and Cameron McKenna as well. So either setting up the function or as part of a wider team. So That's fabulous. Well, welcome to the, the show and tell this week. Uh, what we have planned today, well, of course, we, we have you. As I say, we've got Rich joining us in a little bit. And then shortly, we're going to be talking a little bit about the, the video marketing side as well. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, you might actually want to go back. I don't know what Charlotte has in mind for this week. But if you missed a few weeks ago, she's already given probably one of the best YouTube videos of any law firm I've seen in some time. Uh, but you can go back and, and see the recordings and, and see more about that there. So, um, do we want to do we want to start talking about the the video now? Do we want to talk a little bit more about? Interview. I was hoping to interview Cat first, isn't that what? Yeah, doing? well, let let's let's uh, yeah. let's hear a bit more about Cat first, and then we'll do the the videos, and we'll see uh, see what happens when uh, Rich finally joins us as well. Sounds good. Cat, tell us. Um, so, what is it that people should be using you for? What kinds of things do they come to you for at Flare, uh, Flare Insight? So the kind of day-to-day -day work we do is to help them prep for either pitches, so yeah. getting that background information on a company, uh, who their competitors are, uh, what that company strategy is, and who the decision makers are in that company as well. And that's increasingly becoming a bigger part of what we do. So there's just more and more information on people that you may be meeting, and you can get more background info on how you can sell into them. Uh, and we also provide sector research as well. So that has become a massive thing in the last year because uh, if you're a law firm marketing to 10 sectors, those 10 sectors and the opportunities within them post-COVID have 
kind of gone upside down. So we're trying to help firms to work out what their strategy is to sell into those. And that might be from a business planning perspective, or it could be we can help them identify the potential campaign ideas as well. So it's from a business planning, but also a marketing side as well. And then we also help law firms work out what's happening with their competition. So that's either from a company perspective so if they've got clients um, and they want to find out who else is selling into them we can help them with that uh, but we can also help them on a kind of weekly or monthly basis see what their competitors are up to and what innovations there are and the new campaign ideas that are coming out so uh, something that I picked up on recently is uh, law firms using LinkedIn live so uh, they must have been copying you three so <laughs> um, well, they, well, yeah. they announced yesterday they're going to start putting videos into the header uh, for the banner on LinkedIn yeah. as well. So, um, you know, you'll get, um, there'll be a dream three seconds for most people because it'd be me silent in the video for three seconds. <laughs> but if you click on it, the sound comes on, unfortunately. So, um, do, do firms tend to, uh, what's the instruction time like? If, you, if, I, if I had a, I'm a lawyer, I've got to use cat, I've seen on this video, what's the lead time for you to be able to help me if I'm going to go and do a meeting with a client? Is that, is it days? Is it weeks? What, what, how quickly do I need to come to you in advance of time? Uh, the more time the better but it can be a couple of days that we can turn information around if you want us to go really in depth on a client uh that takes us typically kind of five to six hours to to go really in depth and put a SWOT analysis together on a company uh, and that's something that we've been doing more and more so firms may have had for example news alerts that come through on a on a company but actually there's, they've been restating their financial results, their strategies completely changed over the last six months, and they're really looking to us to put a few pages together that shows them what's actually going on with that company's agenda. Um, but yeah, we can typically do things within a week. Uh, if it's more of a suite of sector reports, for example, that we need longer lead time, but it's that tends to be around this time of year or kind of January, February time when people start thinking about their marketing plans and panicking. So. And do you tend to work to kind of templates that you've got a flair insight or is it something that you've got to tailor for every firm's kind of output, as it were? If you're producing a client report or something similar. Sorry, I think it broke up a bit. Can you say it again? Yeah, if you're doing a, um, a client report for somebody, do you have to do it in the kind of law firm's template? Or is it done in your, you've got a standard form that you report in? Oh, I don't know what's going on here. We have a little bit of a, a broadband issue and now Simon's disappeared as well. Oh dear. Oh no, Simon's back. I think mine seems to be working okay, but I don't know what's going on. Kat, I was asking whether oh, or not you, everyone. is it something you have to do? <laughs> Is it something that you have to do? Yeah, I'm not going to ask that question. I'm bored of that now. Um, the, uh, the 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 sector planning. Do people come to you and help and ask you to help them build up their sector plans as well? As it like for the whole of the firm? I, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I I can hear you. I think it might be Kat. What, is it just me and you, David? <laughs> I, I I can hear you. Uh, I've got everything's green on this side. Let me just have a look. No, everything should be fine. Let's just say something again, Simon. Hello, I'm Simon. <laughs> no, is it not working? Uh, it is. I think Cat keeps up, and Cat's gone. Simon, you've got to stop talking to guests like this because they they just up and leave. It's 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 absolutely terrible. Flipping out. I I I think it might be. I'm just here. We go. She's coming back online. Hey, look, it's not oh. me. <laughs> right. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's going well. Right. Is Hello. should be good now. Right. Can everyone hear everything? Cass, I can you can you hear us? 
Oh, no. I, think, I think we're struggling with the connection. Do what we there. Do, David. Why don't we move on to the video section? Yeah. And then if Kat's uh, reception gets a bit better and we can talk to her properly, yeah. then we can interview a bit more a bit later on. I just think that it's not fair to keep it. Might, it might be a little bit of uh, a little bit of buffering. Uh, and I'll see what I can do. If there's anything I can do this side in the meantime. So yes, uh the topic we were gonna have a look at this week was around video marketing. Um, I mean, this is this is something that has has been very interesting, especially within the legal sector. Uh, I think it was around 2010. We had uh, 2010, 2012. Google said something along the lines of if you have video on your home page, your ranking will improve. Uh, and that was enough for, for most people to, to rush out, grab a camera and post something and hurriedly put it onto a website, uh, which was often generally pretty bad. So it never really had any impact anyway. Uh, but that was kind of how uh, the bulk of video really started. It's been interesting over the years seeing how some law firms have dealt with video marketing. Uh, I've seen some of the the terrible, rather uh, unanimated with the, the big, window of light behind where the pictures terrible quality the sounds terrible quality um through to the likes i think it was um norton rose with their their offices in uh, in london in uh, east london who had a, a full blown uh video broadcast studio set up in their their fabulous office i think it actually overlooked the the 10 the story atrium there i'm not sure um but the 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 quality and the style of video has has changed a lot over time um so that's that's been quite interesting and then of course there's the promotional side of video as well and and how that's come along um so simon you said you had an interesting video to share uh, so is this sort of a is it is it a law firm promo video? Is it is it? I've sent you a couple. I've sent them through to you already. You they have created in your LinkedIn feed as well to make sure that you're ready to play them, so that we look immensely professional. And just, he did make me he did make me think there just while you're getting there, and I'll save you. But um, he did he did make me think of the um, Norton Rose um, uh, the trainee video from a few years ago. Do you remember the Do you remember that one from the? africa market that they'd done a trainee or a graduate kind of video and it's all about this trainee going like he's dreaming at law school and have you seen this video do you know what i'm talking about anyway it he, rings a bell oh man it's the it's 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 um how can i put it nicely it's uh it's a rotten tomato of, <laughs> of, a, of a of a of a law firm video if you want an example about how to get the right tone it's just yeah it was well off the pace i think they were pretty embarrassed about it at the time but it's um yeah it's, you can still find it i've just found it a minute ago on roll on friday <laughs> so you can you can still find these videos as well right you, have you got these i've got i've got a, I've got a couple of them Which, set can we up have, here uh, can we have the burkitts one first is that possible yes bear with me one moment stand by can I can I talk at you or actually ask a question whilst you're pulling that up? Go <laughs> I for will it. Pull it up now. Um, uh, I wanted to ask when you said that um, Google picks it up, that it's on your homepage, etc. Um, I'm I'm personally really curious about the optimization of that because obviously it's all you know well and nicely said that yeah you should dash a video there, but if it's not properly optimized, then it just would drag your site speed right down and then you're actually causing more damage than good um like i don't know is, is there anything more to it than optimize it properly or or have you had any experiences regarding videos embedded like is it better embedded should you drag it from youtube should it be organic um ju just to spin in some seo i stuff. mean f first of all it it should be there for a reason other than oh quick we might get a quick boost on google um i think the other thing is as well <sighs> youtube is okay it will host the videos away from your web website it won't have a, a, a particularly much of an impact on speed of the website however i will say that if you're going to use a youtube video on your website make sure that you set it up correctly. <laughs> um, I, 
know I think doing. Simon knows where this is going. <laughs> so I, I've had a, I've had a few clients over the years and and going through their websites, uh, seeing the video, and you you go in uh, as a user would, and you play the video, and of course when it gets to the end, YouTube has a habit of offering recommendations. <laughs> and on more than one occasion, those recommendations were were not uh, particularly suitable for a law firm or possibly anyone in business to the general public, in especially one case. Um, and, you know, you get this, this um, I think it's like a, a, a six thumbnails pop up or it's it sometimes, I think back then there was one that it just also played into a next video. And it was just uh, so inappropriate. It was ridiculous. But they just, they hadn't noticed it. They hadn't seen it. So one little tip I always used to say was set up a playlist, whether it's the one video or a group of videos and run it like that. And then, of course, there are uh, hosting such as Vimeo or Wistia, uh, which are also really good. Wistia is one that I used to use a lot of. Uh, you can do some really nice stuff with that. You can do some gatekeeping stuff. Um, I also get a lot of analytics off the back end. Uh, more and more video is is in some ways self-optimizing that little area of, of SEO. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to page speed, unless you're whacking a great big video on your website, it's generally not too bad. Just be just be wary on how it's how it's all set up. I think firms are definitely getting better these days with it anyway. I mean, you've got as of first of May, you've got 2.11 seconds. And if you're like lifting the lifting into the site, as David says, from Vimeo or something, it's not going to affect the 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 load time. And the other thing as well is it it self optimizes. Uh, David doesn't in terms of the size of it. So if you're looking at the mobile screen versus desktop um, and the resolution of the screen, Vimeo spots what you're doing. It'll serve the right content immediately, so you don't even have to think about like putting the right videos to stuff for it. I, I, I do think that there's a whole load of SEO bump as well. David from Google itself, though, and people don't. I, I, I mean, when we report on the digital 100, there's not enough optimization done video side on yeah. Google yeah. by people. So the thing I say to Charlotte's question is, I, I would host it on. I would put it on Google, even if you have it on Vimeo. I would put it on yeah. Google. Yeah. Vimeo, I, my preferred format for kind of hosting it for a website for lots of different reasons, and so that's where I put that. I think it makes it a lot easier to not have those follow-on um, videos, etc. As well, um, but then anything that you're doing with it on LinkedIn needs to be native um, because otherwise it won't get as many views if you do it from a youtube link somebody told me they'd solved it the other day but um i'm not sure that's the um not well exactly from malcolm that's a, such a fair point uh, you will show competitive stuff if you're not careful as well but you um yeah, yeah if you do it on linkedin then just do it natively just um upload the video the good thing about that is it has to be under 10 minutes in length now the one you're going to show here david then from denise is actually only what two minutes 29 seconds uh, and Matt and the team at Burkitt's have done a really good job with trying to push on with video over the last wee while. And look, let, if, can we listen to a few seconds of it and I can talk through yeah. about what I like about it? Hi, my name is Denise Finley. I wanted to make this short video to highlight some practical steps that you can think about taking if you're getting divorced. Getting divorced can be a hugely worrying and stressful time and it's difficult to know what to do first. A useful starting point will be to put together a list of all outgoings. We can then cross-reference this with income to work out who can afford to pay for what. Have a look to see whether there's anything you can do to boost your income. Now that you're separated, it might be that one of you is eligible for universal credit. And this can be the case even if you're living under the same roof. It's always really useful at the outset to put together yeah i mean you could almost carry on um david like playing in the background with the volume down right which is going to prove point number one which is that burkitts have set it up perfectly so that you can watch the video if you're on linkedin well, 90 percent of the videos on facebook and linkedin are watched with the sound off the, right? this is this is i think one of the big things when when you're putting video together make sure that um you have those subtitles in place in you know whether and to be honest whether it's whether you're in an office or even working from home or somewhere you know i know myself i i so often rely on subtitles especially when it's the the business side of, of videos and looking through them and it, it makes such a difference it does um the other things they've done really well here are one it's really short so two and a half minutes <clears throat> someone who wants to look at divorce stuff on their phone 
doesn't want their partner looking over their shoulder where they're doing so, one would assume, right? So keep it short, keep it simple, make it practical. Watch this video and you'll see how quickly um, she's condensed those messages down. Two, they've used cutaways of other videos. They've taken some stock, right, and embedded it through the video. So she, you know, blinks strangely or like looks away strangely, or does something a bit like I do all the way throughout this hour. But if she, if she does that on the video, right, and it's not live, then we can just cut to those other shots. It's relatively cheap to do that in stock nowadays, and it looks good, and it looks human, uh, and I think they've done a really good job as well. But I love how, um, if you think about this content, this could have been written as a, as a um, it's two and a half minutes, let's say speaking speed of 200 words a minute, which is roughly is, so about 500 word article she would have written for this piece. We would have had no sense of who she was as an individual, none right we'd have had a pretty standard form this is what to think about when you think about divorce kind of copies nothing wrong with it it's just that this talks to a different audience denise has really got something right about um you know this is who i am so i stand for these are the kind of things that you can you know expect me to see they've got one of their own videos following up there yeah immediately right rights of way as it were so they've got everything right Burkett's uh on this um and i really like it i think it's accessible shareable and uh, it's only brand new i mean you can see that too. yeah um, it's only literally uh two days ago i think it got loaded and then i think it was up on socials maybe today or yesterday so it is new but i just wanted to show that you can do something not expensive this has just been done at home i think probably on well, on zoom yeah, I mean, I've got to say the the production of this. I mean, and it's so often it's the basics. You get some some good uh, some good lighting, uh, and first of all, that's often where people go wrong. I mean, and for, you know, I've got this great big outside window behind me, which isn't ideal, but I I have lights in front and all the rest. It makes a big difference. Good sound as well from from what I could hear. I've, I've got my earpieces in, um, but the the editing as well. I mean it. It looks good. It's nothing overly showy. Uh, it it does it that you know. It's not drawing away from the message with a, a wow. Look at that uh, transition or fade or whatever. And it's it's, it's, opposite, it's very well done. The opposite. They've done yeah. it. In, if you think what they've really thought about here, what Matt or uh, uh, um, Sam or whoever's done it has thought about is is what does that target audience need to see. You know, and they need to see a human being who's willing to sound like the kind of person who's going to listen to them. So pizzazz or this idea that we have a standard format to all of our videos and they've got to have bookended brand and a, a sting on the ends of it and loads of really clever corporate music. What, why have we got to do that? What if we actually just done what they've done, optimised? Look at that, optimised it. Have they put the... They have. So well. it looks like this is the uh, taken transcription. The okay, yeah. and do you know what? That helps the flipping thing rank as well. I mean, it's such a good idea to do it that way. Yeah, that, that's why after this show, I want you all to write down everything that you've said during the hour and, and email it to me so I can add it to well, YouTube afterwards. You about that, right? <laughs> if you're on a Zoom call and you're doing something like this as well and you don't already do so, please can you try Otter? Okay, oh, Otter yeah. I will directly, it plugs into Zoom. After you're done with the call, about half an hour later, it will just send you a go, your conversation is ready and it's been transcribed. Yeah, you're going to have to do a bit of work, especially with someone like me who mumbles, right, to get some of the words out straight. Um, it does allow for accents, but then you can take that file and turn it into a subtitles file and overwrite the Google version as well very quickly. So there's some really cool things you can do, relatively simple. A big shout out as well for the guys at Lately at the moment who are doing that um, Alex Low um showed it to me you'd load a video like this put it into their system it, it basically does all of that and chunks the video into social media snippets and automatically drags the text out for you into a series of social posts so it would take one video like this and it will turn it into 20 30 different posts i, I used to spend hours doing that yeah i bet, I bet. <laughs> and then alex if you look at his feed you know he now does something rich and uh once and then it gives him a gift of keeping going anyway look listen big shout out to burkett's i don't know if anybody else has got any comments yeah. on what they've done but i thought it was a nice accessible video no that was good yeah no it's um i, I was just going to say how i think they picked the perfect person you know like she just has that personality she has the voice she has the, and you know th that's the thing i mean naturally some firms or some companies will be limited in terms of who they can put in front of the camera um but but look you know first of all you know shout out to her 
for sitting down in front, front of the camera because I think you know, it's it's all nice and well said that you know video is the next big thing and we should all do it but it's flipping scary yeah Some people yeah. don't like it and I think that you know like the, the fact that law firms are pulling this off and finding people in the firm who are willing to sit in front of a camera is brilliant because it's not it's not necessarily their job it's not always the marketing team who are exhibitionists and you know like to show themselves like we do <laughs> um so yeah no i i really like this video it's always interesting uh, when you work with the law firms, finding those individuals that are willing to put themselves out there. And whether it's the the, the podcast, the blog, the video, um, and as you say, there, there, are, there are some that may come forward that aren't totally suitable. Uh, and then there are others that you'd absolutely love who just are not going to do yeah. it for a moment. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute. It's a really serious point on this as well, right? On that, I learned as a digital marketing guy and over these years as well, it is not for us marketeers to decide that necessarily. I know that we think, oh, yeah, well, so-and-so is like a bit, you know, boring or they drone on a bit of this and that. There's some guys who work in the nuclear industry that think that guy is the safest and best option for them. And they think that is the guy I want, right? Those I Let the buyers decide, let the stats talk and let that do that. I personally, if people want to do video, my view is it will not be detrimental to the brand at the moment. So as long as they're not you know, swearing or saying anything silly, I know people can be a bit turgid, right? But, but apart from that, I would encourage anyone who steps forward, I'd let them have a go. I would give them some pointers. I, I did have one a while ago. Um, I'm not going to name the individual involved, but um, you're in change and you know exactly who you are. He's just uncoached my video. just wouldn't do what, you know, we're asking to do. Um, but, you know, most other people get it and are willing to do what they need to do as well. I, I don't like being on video. My rule is quite simple, though, David. Record it once. Don't ever watch it again. <laughs> yeah, I, never, I mean, I it's... It's funny, the the example that I was thinking of specifically was actually somebody who was so incredibly sweary, I would have been beeping out probably about 60% of the content, and I just didn't have the time to do it more than anything else. <laughs> so that was just too much editing even for me. Shall we have a look at the, you've also got the carpool case law. Let's do it. Season right. one. Can I just, oh, um, wow. just, before we get going, right, this, it's a quick shout out to Maria Shahid. Uh, most people would know Maria anyway. She's brilliant and does lots of good stuff in property and journalism and um, ghostwriting and things like that as well. So if you don't know her, then please um, go and follow her on LinkedIn because she's uh, a really good resource for the industry as well. She pointed me toward this video and said, she said, whatever week you do videos in, this is the one that you're going to win with. I didn't realize that Charlotte was going to come with her um, Cheech and Chong video. But to be fair, right, it is the, it is the, it is the nearest equivalent. But um, that's actually uh, talking about the law instead so this is by um uh this is by wilberforce chambers uh, jonathan seitler and his daughter miriam seitler and she's a barrister at landmark chambers so they've taken this idea of carpool karaoke and instead they talk about a recent case and they're not even at the same organization how wonderful is that like so let's have to go listening just for a couple of minutes or for a minute or so it'd be great so I saw your case. Yes. Very exciting. Have I got to stop listening to... No, I what is it? It's an open goal and two defenders simply slide again. What a fortunate year it was. And a most characteristic error by Edison. Sorry. Yes. So did you expect that? Well, there's two issues. The first one is whether a right to an MSV, a multi-school visit, is a code right? And the yeah. answer is yes. Obviously. Well, not so obviously, because there's no mention of a right to survey or a right to inspect. But what is a multi-school visit? It's where, you, where a surveyor goes, 
and a man. You can cut it, David, in terms of the actual content itself, right? And I, but I do, I do think that people should check in on this channel, right? Okay, they they have a lot of fun in what they're doing. It's different. And there's something really sweet about father and daughter, both barristers doing it together as well. Yeah, there's a little bit of mansplaining at the beginning, and I'm not sure that we need that too much. But you know, equally, uh, it's 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 just such a novel and uh, lovely way to do something a bit different and all pattern. It's actually featured on. Um, uh, on legal cheek a while ago this video as well but yeah i wanted to flag it as just something just for firms who think they can't do things differently what are the production values and the cost of this i mean he's listened to the football on the radio when he first started yeah. so, you know it's, I, about, it's, it's about as accessible and human as it gets no i think i think that that's uh it's really nice and i always like those uh very personal sort of setups you know and you never know never quite know where it's going to go but i think as you say the fact that they're not they're not two people within the same business um it it gives it a much more uh realistic feeling to it and you know they've got uh, how many views has this got over four thousand views That's since uh, 2019 that's pretty impressive i'll tell you what, just just before we carry on any further drum roll please um he's here rich, rich dibbins is in the building thank you <laughs> thank hello you. rich how you doing all my apologies late to the party but yes how is everybody we we are all well we're doing well uh it, that's, that's just... now that you're here <laughs> <laughs> oh look our viewing figures have gone up um <laughs> Too kind, Rich, 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 just just so you know, we have Kat Collier joining us today as our special guest. We had some technical difficulties early with some some sound quality, so we've actually dived into having a look at some of the the video marketing examples that we have here. Um, so we we just went back. Is it working again in the north of England, or is it is it still not working? <laughs> I have five bars on my internet, so I don't know what's going on, but it's it's it's, it's fine crystal with me. clear you, now. You're running us off a mobile yeah. network, cat. That's an absolute. <laughs> Are we not worthy of I'm, your uh, Wi-Fi? I'm I'm stood on a mountain trying to get some sort of internet. So, uh... well, we're going to come around to we're going to come around to interviewing her in a few minutes' time. So okay, cool. <laughs> but no, I I I really like that one. Where where did you find that one? What do you know about it? That was it? Shahid who put it forward to me uh, and had named it. And I think that in a way that tells you something, doesn't it? It's, it's kind of, uh, Rich, you just missed it, but it's um, carpool case law. And these it's a barrister father and daughter duo. <laughs> and they talk about a recent case thing. It's a brilliant idea, right? It's simple. It's cheap. It's really informative. It's not very long. I mean, it's literally, literally it's listening to the football scores as they start the show, right? It's such a rich. You're going to really like it, I think. But I think... Oh, yeah. um, I think that um, the fact that Maria remembered it front of mind, right? That recall is huge. Like even all that time later, it was just in 2019 it's released. And that recall, when I asked her about it the other day, is like there more than 12 months later. It's not the kind of marketing that we're trying to produce, that people go, oh, yeah, you've got to go and look at this example. That's what I love about it. That's that's really nice. I like that one. And I was um, Say that I really like the fact that it's a father and daughter duo. Like there is something so relatable about that, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, and you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just like a complete false impression that I have, but um, it's kind of a thing, you know, like that that law or being a lawyer is is one of those professions that is quite commonly running on in the family. Or maybe I just have a lot of friends who are in similar shoes, but. You know, like there is a story behind, like I, I quite like that untold story, which is quite obvious from what we see. Um, so, yeah, I really like that. OK, well, let's have a look. Um, actually, Charlotte, while, while you're front and centre, shall we have a look at one of uh, you put forward a, a couple of videos here? I've got a, a shoesmith's one. Shall we uh, Outrage. Shall I gear that one up? Uh, it, is that one mine? That one from me. Oh, no. Was that one from you? That's from Okay, Kat. bear with me. Okay. Oh, you sent... Oh, here we go. I've got the legal collective that you sent through. Yeah, and there is a YouTube one. Maybe actually the YouTube one would be better to start with. Um, okay, let me just have a quick look here. If that's possible. 
Um, in the run-up, as you're opening that, um, the reason I'm very keen to start with that, <laughs> because um, James is someone who I regularly talk about. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him um, when I was um, spending time in Sydney. And he is my my lawyer superhero, if, if one can call um, someone um, with, with that high regard. He is amazing. Um, he is present on every single social media platform. And he started this series just out of the blue called Coffee and the Case Note because he said, well, I'm working on case notes all the time anyway, so I might as well just record it. And he he has a little tripod um, and a little clip on mic, uh, lapel mic, um, that he uses. And I happen to know that at the time of recording, that was um, his office where he was working. And I have also worked from that building <laughs> a couple of times. And in the morning, when you're walking in with your coffee, you would see James standing in the corner with his little tripod on and talking whilst people walk around in the background. And Brilliant. if you go to YouTube channel or anything, um, you will see that he does this in coffee shops. He does this um, like back from home when we were in lockdown. He does it from anywhere and everywhere. He actually makes it um, kind, kind of almost look like a coffee shop tour, um, if you like. But, um, but maybe if you um, play the start, and I really hope that yeah. this has an intro as well. Let's see. Uh... Hi there, I'm James Apathy, and this is Coffee and the Case Night. <laughs> Team, today what we're going to talk about is an alleged shareholder who is seeking an immediate interlocutory injunction. What's going on here? We've got a company, right? And there is a party that says, hey, I am the sole owner of one share, and I'm the joint owner of another share. And as a result of that, I should have been paid about $700,000 in dividends. And so this alleged shareholder, if we put it that way, commences corporate oppression proceedings. And what that alleged shareholder wants is we to get very broadly. Stop it, we want it. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend his videos because what he does is explains a genuine illegal case, a legal happening, in such an understandable way that you know like even i enjoy it and i i know nothing about law um he's brilliant um he he has heaps of followings um and actually his tiktok videos are also very worthy of looking at because he just has that character of he's great um and and i think what i was trying to bring out from this example is um the fact that a you don't need expensive equipment preparation whatsoever because he's talk and you know he didn't go out of his comfort zone he didn't start talking about you know i am a thought leader and you know this is how innovative i am he talks about his day-to-day -day job and explains it to people so they come to him and he's actually very clear about you know i will be in business for x number more years and I would really like to win some clients. And you know what? I appreciate that because that's why we all do it. And I don't think there's anything dirty about, you know, everyone wanting to do well in what they do if they help people. Um, so very, very highly recommend that. And um, if you don't yet follow James, then um, go and give him a like on LinkedIn or um, any social media platform because he's, he's a superstar. I, I like that. Again, it's another personal touch. And I think, as you say there, it doesn't take much to get started. Uh, I think some people can can try a little bit too hard and it comes across quite forced. He seems so natural standing there. I, I love the little intro. Um, I really like that. That's he good. just needs an Iron Man poster in the background. So you think, or maybe, uh, a, maybe a unicorn. <laughs> it's it, right? <laughs> if if only we could all have unicorns and Iron Man posters. That video kind of reminded me of how they do the like the news in America. They're all stood there, kind of as as everything's going on behind them. Yeah. Um, and clearly, there was a bit of a there was a guy who wanted to be on camera. Then he walked across with his phone and he walked back again. 
he clearly did not did not need to do that, but knew he'd be on camera. So, but yeah, I, I think no style videos. Yeah, just rocking up and start recording. Not not one person kind of looked at him as he was recording either, which was interesting. It's clearly yeah. not all yeah. looked in Australia. You know, it's just like a, a normal thing to do. I mean, on a lot of these videos, the one thing I'd say is that, uh, and David always tells me, for it, lighting is one thing, but I think sound could be improved a little bit as well. I, if you were to invest in anything, first and foremost, in that situation, I think you can set up for light, but you should probably have a decent mic on you as well. And if there's any way of of, of improving what you've got there, that's mm -hmm. worth doing. For, for something like that, even, uh, you know, a £20 uh, wired lapel mic or um, Rode do a really nice wireless one, you know, there, there's stuff out there that can make a, a difference. And I think, you know, we, we generally say sound is sound is about 50% of the, the quality of what's going forward, to be honest. You can get away with more visually, um, but if the, the sound quality is is struggling, that that's uh, it really throws people off. So we have we have another one from you, Charlotte. Oh, I've got the Legal Collective, the one that you sent through. Yeah, it shouldn't uh, be a too long one. Let me just get this going. One of these days, I'm going to make this so slick finding these. We should video and and or actually, maybe you guys can send them sooner than five minutes before the show starts. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, we can or, or, or during or during the show. Hold on, I think we got something here. Here we go. Right. I mean, awesome. talk, talk about something with some some energy and some drive. I was foot tapping all the way through that. And you know what? That's what I loved about it. I just tumbled across it. It's a catchy song. It, there's nothing corporate. There is nothing, you know, like unique about it. it. It's like you got it out of a bloody comic. And it's simple. It is the most obviously stock videos as it gets. Uh, maybe, maybe iMovie Maker. Uh, none of your, you know, fancy editing um, software. And you know what? For me, it works. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. And I, yeah, that's all it takes to get a video out there. It, it's interesting you mentioned the the stock video footage there because you know I I, I recognise a few of those little clips from from stock photography, but. It was only about halfway through the video when I realised, hang on, I'm looking at this for a purpose. Let me let me concentrate a bit more. The the speed of the edit, um, the visuals used, the upbeat music, it drives you through, uh, and it really is driving you through to watch the whole thing. I mean, it's only a minute long, but um, it was a, a very watchable watchable video. For me, it was the music. The music was I can't I was concentrating listening to the music than anything else. I can I can remember a couple of the words on there, you know, change and you know, modern. But for me it was the music. I just just kind of was like I, I'd remember that video purely for the music purpose. Yeah. Which is obviously a key point as well. I'd be interested to know, because I think it does appeal to us as marketeers. But I just I'd be keen to know whether it appealed to their target audience as well. I, I'm not saying it doesn't at all. I just don't know. But the, you can imagine there's a certain type of uh, person who's going to instruct a law firm that would well look at that and think, fair enough. Like if you're a startup, you don't have a lawyer, and you think, why, why don't we give these guys a try? Fine. But is it going to appeal to GCs in the same way? I, I don't know. And that is that is where that balance needs to be struck. They might have nailed their target audience entirely. Um yeah, just th that's the only thought I want to say. I do like it. It's quite a lot going on in terms of the chop and change, a lot of color schemes and things like that as well. So, but it's um, I you know I I think just just having a quick flick through it there, 
this this is this is specific this looks like it's specific for the channel um this is it's a minute long it looks like it's it's there specifically to grab people as they scroll and i think with with the music the fast cut visuals it's the sort of thing that just makes you stop for that briefest of moments even if you didn't expect it and you will stop you will look at the name you may watch the whole thing but it, it's it's specifically put together to to really make you try and slow people down and and find out a little bit more about them. That's yeah. a good observation. Yeah. Guess guess who's here? <laughs> I was going to say maybe for a second if you can, because um, I I think I was talking over the video. If you can go back to the very start <clears throat> of of the video, um, and maybe just play like I, I think it looks like. like that's what I wanted. I, I just want to see Rich start dancing. Any moment now, he's going to start. I want to get my, to get my cane and my top hat and start doing jazz hands and everything. <laughs> I love it. Um, but, you, you know, what I want to add to that start piece is that that's your storytelling. Like, that's where it all starts. And, you know, like, when you, when you say 28, see 2018 in 2021, like, that's a story. You know, like like you're already there, an English lawyer in Singapore about to start this. Like, it's exciting. You want to know what's the story. What is this English lawyer doing? Um, and and I, I like that. <laughs> what I also I, noticed was the type font changed. So in the beginning, very traditional, very classic, Times yeah. New Roman style. And then it goes into, you know, a very modern, you know, almost Apple-esque wording um kind of type font afterwards so that's clearly you know it's not a type font error that's clearly meant to we've gone from this classic to this modern approach which which is quite nice but yeah somebody's thrown up in canva haven't they and got the premium version and gone crazy with it bless them but yeah i, I, I love it I, I think it's a great video i'll tell you what though it's somebody who knows what they're doing because i think that is is very well put together uh it would definitely make it. definitely make me stop Sort of thing I'd want to watch watch over again. Grab the details. Can't wait for you to show mine, David. <laughs> bear bear with me who's, while who's I... it's cat next. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go on to cat next and then it's rich. Bear with me one moment. Simon I and I are Simon. in competition, so uh we'll oh. see you then. <laughs> I reckon Simon is gonna hate mine. I, I'm just predicting that now. <laughs> it's a, it's about ten years old, but it's it's and it's French as well. Not that oh, you're wow. French, Simon, but I just reckon you're you're not gonna like it. Trivia, on even. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, yep, this is one Shoesmiths. Right, let me just. So this is uh, Shoesmiths. They've packaged their innovations into uh, the power of eight they're calling it and they've just done this over the last couple of weeks um and they start off you you can show the video they start off with cups of coffee and graphs and then it moves on um to something that i've never seen a uk law firm do so i'll let the video child. take over there is a powerful entity designed to thrive in a complex world With eight arms, each independently strong and yet working in perfect coordination. This is not a machine. It has evolved around you. This is the power of eight. Love it. Kids love it, so <laughs> it, it, it's got a, it's got a thumbs up from us, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the the subtle image of the the octopus on the left hand side, and that like look like it's almost like they're in an aquarium style. But that that's really good, isn't it? And it's just you can hear the tentacle to start with, and you think, oh my god, what's happening? Am I going to yeah. die? And then actually, <laughs> and then it actually, like the David, David. So it just really arrests you. I think it was a yeah. It's almost like a David Attenborough style with, you know, the the, the close-up of the octopus. 
yeah. kind of thing. Imagine, a, lot, a yeah. lot of thought has gone into that. Imagine what the CMO has had to do to get that through. Oh, yeah. them, right. And whoever, I don't even know who it is, but kudos to whoever has got that through because that is dairy milk and the flipping uh, drumming. Uh, well, for the legal world, it is. It's that yeah. extraordinarily different. I, I've never been so shocked at a law firm video. Kat, you've absolutely blown out the water there. Whatever rubbish which shows us next. Is <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, it's not rubbish. <laughs> again, you know, I think that's, that's another one that really grabs attention. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Um, I and again uh, amazed with the production value of something like that. Yeah, no, that yeah. Is, um, they, they've spent a lot of money on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, going to superimpose shoes miss logo on the octopus or doing anything cheesy like that. Oh, <laughs> they're going to do it. That would have ruined it. That would have ruined it. Toy, aren't they? I know they are. Oh no. <laughs> But I was going to say um, what I also like about it. I think we spoke about this when we talked about brochures and we were looking at the one, the interactive one with the chairs on it. This does the same for me in terms of the what, what I call the mind puzzle. You know, it's just like it's out of place. Like you can't not look because it doesn't make sense and people feel yeah. compelled to look and figure out what the hell this is because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't well, think it would have been the case when the five of us would have been silent previously at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that was, I, I, again, yeah, I think Charlotte, absolutely right. It, it's something that, that throws you out of uh, the expected to the unexpected. And I think definitely when it comes to law firms, you don't expect a floating octopus in the office. Uh, so we have Rich's video here. Let me just get this queued up. I just want you to look at the views. 358,000 oh. views this video has oh, had. It's 11, it's 11 years old. You know, it's dated. But you wait and see. Oh, yeah, go, rap. It's a wrap. It's MC Sonna. Allô? Oui, ne quittez pas. J'ai pas le look d'un trader, encore moins d'un dealer. Moi, ma priorité, c'est ta sécurité. Je vis pas dans un palace avec une super blonde. J'ai peut-être pas la tchatch des mecs en robe longue. Mais mes conseils sont incontestables. Je suis notaire, un métier d'enfer. Je suis notaire, il est notaire. Je m'occupe de tes affaires. Pour que t'es pas, non, pas de galère. Tu supportes plus ton petit job à la con. T'en as plus qu'assez de bosser pour pas un rond. Tu rêves de monter ta propre société. Mais les formalités, c'est pas ta tasse de thé. T'as trimé des années pour te faire un peu de blé. T'aimerais bien en faire don à tes futurs rejetons. Appelle-moi pour les droits de succession. Je sais y faire. Je suis notaire. Je suis notaire. Un métier d'or. Je suis notaire. Yeah. yeah, you can pause he's, there. He's, um, he's mean, rapping. the rapping notary public. But he's rapping in the style of um, MC Sulla, so like a really famous French rapper, so it's quite clever. Um, and he's also speaking to you in the two form of the word, which is really clever because there's an accessibility that you wouldn't expect from a lawyer because he'd normally be vouvoying you instead. So it's very, very clever in terms of what he's doing. He's saying, you can trust me with your business affairs. You can trust me with, I mean, you just, you get, this isn't a guy who is going to speak to you in some yeah, dusty office like that. So it's very clever. Yeah, I like 11, it. 11 years old. So you can imagine what law firm videos people were doing 11 years ago. Wow. Um, or even if they were doing video at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whenever I talk about video to law firms, I say, well, you can, there's various options, but let me show you something. And the looks that I get from people. Yeah, we'll never do that. <laughs> That's it. Do you, do you know much about the, the background of it? Sorry about this. It, it is a legitimate law firm advertising <laughs> notary public legal services, but they've made multiple videos of, you know, of their legal services. Um so yeah, no, it's, it's a genuine law firm in France. Um, that, it's that ag creative. again the the production of something like this, absolutely, yeah. absolutely fabulous. I love that. Sorry, you have to excuse me. I'm I'm having an issue with bubbles being blown. No, that, is, yeah. that is as it should be. It's Friday. It's it's effectively Friday evening. So, <laughs> I, I think it's a brilliant one. I really like it. Are we going to put these links into the comments after we've shared the live video later today? Yeah, yeah. 
I think they should for people. Really good. Um, I just awesome. did a quick squeeze through the Digital 100, and I wanted to just do a quick shout out to one other as well, and a, a former place of work of Cat as well. Pinsent's actually won um, most watched video on uh, LinkedIn for last year in our roundup, all the LinkedIn stuff. Rich, uh, you and I can pick it up another time on LinkedIn for lawyers, I'm sure. But they got. Um, 28,808 28, views on a LinkedIn video that was only released in December. And it was a December Christmas card, but they've done it so well, all thing as well. And I just think that the numbers on the boards are huge when you get video right. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it, again, I've, I found all of these so, so very watchable. Um, I think they're absolutely fabulous. Can I can I actually ask a question and maybe this um, um, brings us back if, if you if no one minds uh, to cat for a second because um, um, as you started talking um, at, at the start one of the things I wanted to ask um, as you also make recommendations to firms about specific campaign ideas um, do you also include tactics so if, for example would a video be a part of a recommendation that you would make. Yeah, I mean, it depends if we're looking. So we've looked for, at firms uh, when COVID happened. I think law firms and everybody was in a bit of a tiz for about six weeks and then actually realized, oh, we need to change our marketing tactics. And uh, we provided recommendations for firms, for example, that were just talking about themselves operationally, but they weren't talking about how they were caring for clients or how they were caring for their own employees. Um, and we made the point that, podcasts possibly weren't needed anymore because people tend to listen to those on the tube or wherever they are and actually the more of a, a, a face and having those videos in place is, is what is needed and what has become kind of mainstay now so I think that's there to stay but yeah we we can provide some ideas on channels as well but um, it's more we provide those ideas and we, we don't have the kind of digital capability. So it'd be up to you guys to uh, bring that on. I think that's, that's interesting. You mentioned about the podcast there because podcast audiobooks. it's that's for me, that's something when I'm, I'm commuting, walking, running, driving. Uh, and, and since all this has happened, yeah, I, I just so rarely listen to those podcasts, but the, the videos, it's, I'm just a better place now to be, to be watching those videos. It's interesting. Yeah, oh, and I think, sorry, Good. people have more time for it as well. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily look at a video before and it's, it's having that interaction and seeing people's faces that I want, that I'm missing at the moment. So I'm more drawn to that video content. So. Charlotte and I were talking earlier this week about, um, the kind of uh, elements of, um, uh, of, well of humanity that you can put into your kind of pitch materials and the approaches you can take as well and using different people's kind of um preferences as well. um and we were talking about how you can uh you know really uh, either talk to people's egos or their commitment or whatever it might be so and i think the video is a great way of doing that even with really important pitches there's no harm in somebody who can't make the pitch day because they're at home that day. Be able to record a video and have it played in the room as well. And just say, look, we've, you know, we haven't got Charlotte with us today, but we have captured a few words from her. And I think that's, you know, that needs its place in the world now. It's well, we don't have to pretend, or that's not, they're not able to make it anymore. Therefore, they don't get a voice in the room. I think that's, that's got to be the wrong approach. I want to see more videos being used. I, I really do think that 2021 should be the year of UGC for law firms. Like, they stop having so many, these formal corporate ones that have been done, they're great, the ones we've looked at today. But having a huge generated stuff that's like inexpensive, but still nice enough, you know, done, but actually it's totally accessible to people. You know, it's so essential. Um, and it resonates, Kat, doesn't it, with those people who are on the client side, on the target side. Yeah, and I think people, could, yeah, we, I think law firms have got over the fact that they don't need to be necessarily professional or, you know, have to put lots of money into it. Um, and it makes them more approachable. So, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. Do you, do you find when you're doing your kind of research with people as well that they, they do they tend to act on your advice when you're giving it to them? Is it is it something that lawyers really, do they, do they look at it and go, okay, or do they go, right, we need to do some stuff differently now? Is that, how are you finding it, that? I, I've evolved the product to become more like that. So uh, when I first started out in-house, it used to be way more, here's some information, this is good to know. <laughs> And uh, we've condensed it down to being a few pages and it's prefaced with some actions. So we always try and work out what it's for. So is it for a pitch or is it for 
cross-selling opportunities and we will come up with some ideas of how they can cross-sell into a client. Um, and a lot of what we do is trying to break them out of their silos. So they're thinking more about the company itself and what it needs rather than we do real estate. So we'll just sell them some real estate. So um, lawyers definitely are, are really up for that. And for BD as well, it kind of helps them. They can copy and paste our recommendations into a CRM plan or a pitch plan. So it's it's trying to make it usable and actionable. So. Who do you get instructed by? Is it by lawyers or is it by the BD guys or who comes to you? BD tends to be the gateway for it because it comes out of their budget, basically. So <laughs> they about, don't want... What about people like Rich and I on the digi side? Do, do you get instructed by digital marketing guys to do things for them? No, it tends to be more on the BD, CRM side, or we sometimes get instructed by the marketing director to come in and and give an objective view so it may be how different firms position themselves in terms of their international marketing and we would look at their websites and their external content and give our view but it can be more the campaign message so what is that message itself and we might highlight different ways that they've done it with different channels but um it's it can be more about the intent rather than the way they've done it so. and the amount of octopuses they've got in their campaign now definitely <laughs> in their favor right yeah definitely. Um, i feel like uh well i'm just sort of mindful of the time david i know you're going to wrap up in a minute but i i feel like cat didn't really get a proper go to the cat would you come back again and tell us a bit more about it and if we asked you maybe some sex specific stuff would you join us another time <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We'd love to have you along again. Um, maybe Rich will, you know, come for your session that way as well. Who knows? Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what are we talking about next time is what I was going to ask. It's I, good. <laughs> I know we've covered, well, we've covered over the last one. We've now done video. We did. Uh, didn't we do Hello. podcasts? Hello. Calls to action. Social media, um, one kind of ended up being social media. Yeah, I think that cats are light on something there that we haven't touched upon yet, and I think we should talk about, which is uh, the sectoral stuff. And I think we should look at sectors. Uh, and I think that it's given it's the main way that firms are going to market at the moment. Uh, I think we should talk about it and what it means for how they're approaching various different things. Um, There's things like um... is, that, is, you, is that a filter? <laughs> it's one of the gels from the lights I've got like here. <laughs> There's different topics that I could um, suggest, like net zero and how different firms are coming, uh, kind of working around that in terms of sectors. That is so. absolutely popular. Man. Would you come and talk about that or ESG or something? Yeah. Well, let's let's do that, and then I think um, Rich, it'd be great uh, on the sectors front. You can look at it from the DG and how things sit aside along each other, and whether people are using the right channels for the different sectors and stuff like that. And that would be really good. Sure. Charlotte's obviously got loads to add on the behavioural side as well for what do people do in different sectors. I think we could have a, I think we could do a sector special, and it'd be really good. That that sounds that sounds good to me. I'm yeah. I'm I've now juggling hold. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no that 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 sounds uh, that sounds very good for the for the next show. Well, we, we're just coming up to an hour. Uh, Kat, very sorry that we had the the technical difficulties earlier, but we would we would love to have you back. Oh, thank you. Um, and and Charlotte, Rich, Simon, the the usual ship of fools. Thanks thanks for joining. <laughs> uh, and and I think we we've, we've really showcased some great videos today, um, some really really good examples there. So um, until next week, uh, Thursday five o'clock. Uh, it seems to be the usual time, the usual bat place. We shall be here. And until then, everyone have a good week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Don't do any more calls.